What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, we are covering a very, very serious situation that is going on in Florida. This is Hurricane Idalia that is currently rapidly intensifying as we speak. It already is a high-end Category 1 hurricane with winds of 90 miles per hour. The pressure's down to 974 millibars, which is quite low for a high-end Category 1 hurricane. You typically expect this with around a Category 2 hurricane right here and it's moving north at 15 miles an hour so here's the situation we have right here um yeah pressures down uh, hurricane force winds extend out 15 miles from the center and tropical storm force winds extend out 160 miles from the center and this is the new news we got this morning we are now looking at storm surge of up to 15 feet in parts of the big bend right here that is absolutely crazy right here. So we're going to have to continue to monitor it. And if you are in the Big Bend and you are and you are still here and you're watching this and you're looking at this potentially 15 foot storm surge, if you uh, you still have time to evacuate. But if your local officials tell you to evacuate, evacuate. You still have some time left before the system makes landfall. So this is in. This is where it is right here. It's actually just west of Monroe or Collier County, where the center of circulation mm -hmm. is. It's already starting to develop an eye right here, actually, which is pretty interesting if you think about it. It's been having some trouble developing the eye wall since it got to Cuba. We were covering it on our live stream yesterday. It was a 70-mile-per-hour tropical storm as it was making landfall on Cuba or making a close pass to. We're not 100% sure. But as soon as it entered the Gulf, it started to rapidly organize and rapidly intensify into what is potentially going to become a major hurricane as it's approaching the Florida coast. And this is what the NHC is calling for. Here's the cone right here. The NHC is calling for a major hurricane at landfall, with, uh, for, according to them, a Category 3 hurricane with winds of 125 miles per hour. Personally, I think it could get even stronger than that since sometimes these systems, uh, these uh, uh, estimates do tend to underestimate how rapidly the storm is intensifying. And as of right now, we still have like what uh, 18 plus hours left before landfall. So this thing definitely could continue to organize and intensify as we get to shore. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. It is currently over the loop current as it's currently paralleling the Florida coast right now. Uh, landfall is imminent in at this time. Here's what we have going on with that's working for it. Global sea temperatures easily right now where it is. It's in a huge area of 30 plus degrees Celsius or 86 plus degree Fahrenheit as it is bearing down on the big bend of florida over here ocean heat content also a very huge area it's over in an area of over 100 plus ohc that's what's using to rapidly intensify also some of the system is actually in the loop current and it's kind of fuel feeding off of that to fuel what is potentially becoming a major hurricane right here so that's our big situation we have going on right now and i want to go ahead and show you some infrared uh, satellite right here because the eye is starting to come out this organization at the infrared and the cloud tops has become quite impressive so far it's still currently getting its kinks out together but i suspect by that by the time uh, nighttime falls tonight it's going to start to really get its act together and continue to do what it's doing right now hurricane hunters have been out all morning and we have the and here's our latest reconnaissance mission that was finished about a few hours ago still finding a, a deepening storm at the time they were finding winds of 85 miles per hour in this system northeast eyewall is this right here we're looking at it uh, all over right here the northeast eyewall definitely is the strongest section of the eyewall for sure from what i've been looking at and yeah, it, it, that's how it is in a lot of these systems right here. I know Ian last year, the strongest was in the Western Eyewall, but this year but with Idalia, it's currently in the Northeastern Eyewall, which for storm surge uh, principles and the fact that this th in the Eastern part of the system is pretty much pushing storm surge into Florida right now, that's going to be a pretty big situation. And considering how the bin, big bend looks geographically, it's going to push all that storm surge in. So that's our situation we have right here. Wind shear, what wind shear at this point? We're looking at 10 to 15 knots of wind shear all the way up to landfall. There's really no dry air that's really going to stop this at this point. There was a little bit yesterday, but that's pretty much subsided. And the system has very favorable conditions to continue developing. So we're going to have to pay attention to this as time continues to go on. Hurricane warnings remain in effect from at the Apalachicola Bay to Sarasota. 
over here. Tropical storm warnings are now in effect for much of the Space Coast in Florida, the entire coast of Georgia, and most of the coast of South Carolina, as well as a tropical storm watch is in effect for the rest of the South Carolina coast and the North Carolina coast, including Wilmington, Topsail Beach, Surf City, Onslow County, all those areas right there. So everyone needs to take this very seriously from Florida to the Carolinas. The state of Florida has already declared a state of emergency. The state of Georgia and also the Carolinas are paying very close attention to this. They have uh, emergency situ uh, setups ready to go, so we'll have to monitor it for sure. Now we're going to go ahead and kind of show you the track models we have with this and the intensity models. Track models pr almost in unison having this thing hitting the big bend, uh, which in my opinion... If, if I had to pick a spot where a hurricane would make landfall, it would have to be the Big Bend. And I know from my viewers for the, from the Big Bend, you're probably wondering why we're still going to get impacted. Well, the reason being is because the panhandle of Florida and the also Tampa area are quite populated areas. And the Big Bend is the only rural area in Florida other than the, the area around Lake Okeechobee. So that's why I would. It's still going to be bad for those who are in the Big Bend, but if it but if it shifted west towards the Panhandle or shifted towards the T Tampa Bay area, could, things could get a lot worse with that. So this is something we need to continue monitoring. That doesn't mean you're not. That doesn't mean these areas are not going to get impacts. In fact, if we look at this, Tampa Bay is already starting to see the outer bands of this system right here. And if we go ahead and show you the radar shot of this right here. This is what's going on. The, uh, we actually have tornado warnings in Collier County right now near Golden Gate, and we also have the outer band starting to impact Tampa and St. Petersburg. That is going; Those conditions are going to continue to deteriorate in, into this evening, so that's something we need to absolutely monitor for sure. Now we're going to go ahead and go back and kind of uh, give, uh, give you some basically some model runs that we have right here. So here's what we have going on. This is the model. This is the HAFSA. We're going to go ahead and update this to 12Z run. So this thing basically continues to rapidly intensify, makes landfalls around either a, a high 940s or low 950 system, pretty much over here in the Big Bend area right here it moves through Tallahassee and then into southern Georgia and then stays just off the uh, on the coast of the South Carolina before moving into North Carolina over here and potentially bringing a lot of uh, a lot of thunderstorms, a lot of sweat, tropical storm force winds. Also, the shear with an association with the front in the Carolinas is going to enhance the tornado threat as well. So everyone needs to pay attention to that as well. So here's the HAFSB to kind of show you what else they're looking at right here. Here's the 12Z. Continued rapid intensification. Pressure goes down to 941 millibars before making landfall in the Big Bend region over here, which that's indicative of either a high-end Category 3 or low-end Category 4 at least. So this still has a lot of room to grow and a lot of room to intensify. We still have 18 plus hours before landfall at this time. The good news is this system is going to be making landfall tomorrow morning rather than overnight tonight. And that will and that and that re, that's good because a nighttime hurricane landfall is always never good with that. So that's the HAFSB. It's going to do a similar situation to the A when it comes to the Carolinas. Now I'll show you the HMON real quickly. The HMON system is continuing to organize, gets down to 937 millibars, and depending on how this goes, there may be a potential eyeball replacement cycle before making landfall according to the HMON, and then moving through Georgia and the Carolinas, bringing those severe thunderstorms. Last one we're showing you real quickly is the HWARF. HWARF has been pretty aggressive so far, has this thing get, making landfalls a 934 millibar system, which is the strongest other than the HAFSA, and then it moves through Georgia and the Carolinas potentially brings a lot of flooding, a lot of severe thunderstorms, a lot of tornadoes as that shear kicks in. And we'll have to update you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel on all those threats. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very serious situation that is going on. We're going to be going live in just a few hours at 5 p.m. Eastern, so be sure you do not miss that for our live coverage and analysis. But with that being said, we're closing the video right here. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.